Now what? Now what, geeks? Well, now what? The geeks that said that Vettel was finished. The same geek who said Perez was a flop just a couple of weeks ago. A geek. Now what? Race winner, Sergio Perez. Second place, Sebastian Vettel. Now what? You're going to come out and say it's a fluke? You're going to come out and say, nah, he was lucky. I'm talking about both of them, by the way. Both Vettel and Perez. What did I say, you dumb geeks? I said it last year. I said here on my channel, very clear English. Very clear. And I didn't stutter either. I said, Red Bull need to sign Sergio Perez. I said, they need to sign Sergio Perez. They need to get rid of that geek, Alban. He shouldn't have even got called up for the Red Bull. He should have stayed in Toro Rosso. Very simple. He should have never been in that car. That's exactly what I said. But typical geeks, F1 geeks, the ones what sit at home, the ones what lay around all day, ain't got a job, sponge off the mum or girlfriend, jerk yourself off to Pornhub.com. And then they want to come on my Twitter and say to me that I was wrong. But the thing about it, you dumb internet geeks, I've got a YouTube channel, I've got a platform, and it's growing every day. And thank you to all the subscribers I picked up in the last couple of months as well. Nice one. But my channel is growing every day. Because people are beginning to realise that I talk the truth. I've got my following on Twitch and I've got my following on YouTube. Because people know, most of the times when I say something, it comes true. But not you dumbass geeks. What are you going to say now? I told you, I told you, I told you that Sergio Perez is going to make big at Red Bull. I told you dumb geeks that Vettel is not finished. But you didn't listen, did ya? You did not listen. Sebastian Vettel in his prime. Very simple. In his prime. All he needs to do is get away from that, at the time, dog shit Ferrari. He was there too long. He was hanging onto something. It's like, it's like a relationship. You're with a girl for so long and you think, eh. you know it's not working. You know deep down it's not working. She knows it's not working. But one of you is just after like, mm, just make the move and just sail off into the sunset very simple that was Vettel with Ferrari he needed a change he needed to get out of Maranello he needed to go to the UK and he needed to go to a British team another team and show the people out there who Sebastian Vettel is very simple I said it last year. I said it on the back end of last season. Same thing about Perez. And if you don't believe me, go on my video archives. Go on my archives. Go through all my videos and you'll see geeks. Screenshot, record it, whatever you want. But I know I am right. I told you, geeks. I told you. Now what? You're going to say I was wrong? 
You're going to try and make up an excuse? Because I can see that coming. But there you go. Sergio Perez, the winner. He actually said at the beginning of the season. I saw these comments on the internet. I saw them all over the internet. I saw them in news articles. I saw it in all over social media. After two races in, they said he's finished. Nah, he's not right for Red Bull. Perez come out and said, give me, judge me after five races. And that's exactly what Vettel said. Judge me after five races. Now what? You're going to judge him now. Because he won the race. People are going to say, oh yeah, it's because Max Verstappen tyres. Well, I don't give a crap about Max Verstappen tyres. I do not give a shit. The fact, the fact that Sergio Perez crossed that line first and he got the win. And that is it. When the history books are written in F1, which they're written now, who's got it? Who's on the top of the list of Baku 2021? Who was, was standing on the top of the podium? Was it Lewis Hamilton? Was it Max Verstappen? Wasn't Jackie Stewart? Wasn't David Coulthard? Wasn't Mickey Hackenham? It wasn't even Lewis Hamilton's dad. It was Sergio Perez. And what a great podium that was. Pierre Gasly again showing his true skill. Now, in my opinion, Gasly should be at a better team. He's proved himself week in, week out. He puts the work in. He's putting the effort in. He's putting the race craft in. Everything in in a collective box. He's ticked all the boxes. He should be in a better team. Now, we know Red Bull's out of the picture. That's never going to happen. Not now. Red Bull have got their team locked for at least four years. Perez is there for at least four years. Gasly can't wait four years. But maybe down the line. I could see Gasly going to maybe. This isn't, listen, this is just my guess. I could see Gasly going to maybe Aston Martin down the line. He's a young man. He could go to Aston Martin. Maybe Mercedes, you never know. But most likely, he could be. Imagine, imagine seeing George Russell and Pierre Gasly at Mercedes. That would be an amazing team. An amazing team. Because let's face it. Mercedes... Um, Valtteri Bottas look I've defended him I've defended him week in and week out but today he was nowhere nowhere Valtteri Bottas must have dropped off at a local shop somewhere in Baku go, 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 go to the fridge probably got, got himself a Coca-Cola got himself a naan bread Sat down on the side by the park, feeding the pigeons, then got back in the car, then carried on with the race. Because I did not see Bottas anywhere in this race. Nowhere. Like I told you at the beginning of the season, if Bottas fucks up Mercedes constructors, he's gone. And I think he's gone anyway. In my opinion. Look. He's been there long enough now, Bottas. They, today, would have been... Look, if Bottas would have been up there in the top five, top six, that would have been good construction points for Mercedes. That's if Lewis wouldn't have locked up or his magic button he's supposed to have pressed. Whatever, whatever he pressed. But Bottas is, lose, is hemorrhaging points for Mercedes in constructors. Most likely, we're never going to see that again by Lewis Hamilton this season. Mistakes like that. Whatever he pressed. Listen. He lost. He rolled the dice. He pressed some button. And he lost. That was it. But the positive 
Max Verstappen didn't finish either. So everything is still the same. That's the way you got to look at it. But Valtteri Bottas. I've got nothing to say about Bottas today. He was struggling to get past Norris. Don't know what that was about. Like I said, he must have parked up his car on the side, gone to a local shop, get himself for them nice Baku kebabs, dropped dropped a, um, a can of Coca a can of Coca Cola. Must have gone feed the bird somewhere in Baku, gone sightseeing, then jump back in the race because he was nowhere. Let's face it, Valtteri Bottas was nowhere. It all. Let me get a drink. Now, lights out and away we go. Charles gets away. Now, Charles Leclerc, he took me, but I thought that Lewis Hamilton was going to do him in the first corner. Right? I know the first corner's short, first turning back here. From the pit, from, from where the pit, now from where the start line is to the first corner. We know he's got the two miles straight from the top but when the start on the grid it's probably one of the shortest corners on the f1 grid now charles done his best okay listen i know there's a lot of charles leclerc fans out there i'm one of them i think charles leclerc is one of the best drivers on the grid all right he makes a few little mistakes he's gonna he's gonna iron out them little mistakes that he makes now and again but for me, he's one of the most complete drivers on the Formula 1 grid, in my opinion. Now, what could he do? He tried his best. He had Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen behind him. The two fastest cars on the grid. To me, uh, Mercedes has still got the fastest car. Especially on the straight. Now... Charles Leclerc kept Lewis behind him for three laps. There's nothing more he could have done. There's no way that Charles Leclerc could have stayed in front for the entire race. I know that. Charles knows that because he said it yesterday on the um, press conference. So that's facts. So if you're going to hear some dumbass geek on the internet and saying that Charles could have won, he needs to check his facts. So. Lap three, we had lights out the way we go. Everything was running all smooth. Charles got to the first corner, and then lap three, Hamilton got the slipstream on Charles and passed him. It was over, done. Now lap four, Max sets the fastest lap, and just as lap four comes, and he sets the fastest lap, Ocon was complaining about loss of power for the Alpine. So Esteban Ocon lost power in his car. And he got a DNF, and that was Esteban Ocon's um, 2021 Baku Grand Prix in the toilet. So, I'm sure when he wakes up in the morning, he's not going to be happy. But, it's done. He's Baku for 2021, he's done. He's never had the best luck here. A couple of years ago, even Perez went wheel to wheel in the barrier. I think he got the worst of it when Perez, in my opinion, pushed him into the barrier. But at that time, for me, Ocon was the faster driver for me at that time. I think it was the 2018. When it was called the... Um, when I were the Pink Panthers. But yeah, um, Ocon got a DNF. Loss of power. Now, lap six, Max passes Charles Leclerc. So, lap three, Hamilton passes Charles Leclerc. And three laps later, well, four laps later, Charles gets passed by... No, no, it was lap six, so it's four laps, three laps later. Um, Max passes um, Charles Leclerc. And Paul De Resta was coming in his pants like he always does. Jerking off in the studio, probably. He was saying, oh, Max, what's Max going to do with Max? So he's going to be thinking he's going to take Lewis Hamilton now. I'm going to take Lewis Hamilton. That's what Paul De Resta was repeating and repeating and repeating. If someone doesn't get that geek off my TV, I, I know that I know, listen, I ain't gonna I ain't one one of these people gonna protest. I'm not one of these people gonna protest and make whatever. I say my piece on my YouTube channel. 
and then I go that way. I leave them over there and I'll stay over there. Simple. But I'm sure there's going to be a lot of protest going into Sky Sports F1 over that dumb Rangatang geek. I'm sure. He's the most... But to be a commentator, you're not supposed to be biased. Even though Lazenbury is a geek, right? He tries to keep it fair. He lets it slip sometimes now and again. We know he's a Ferrari boy. He lets it slip sometimes, but most of the time he's professional. I don't like the geek, but he's professional. But Paul the rest of comes in his pants five times over. It's all about Max and Red Bull. It's all about whoever can beat Lewis Hamilton. One time in the race, he was saying, oh yeah, Max, Max, Max. And then when Vettel was behind Lewis, he was going, oh Vettel, come on Vettel, come on Vettel. He's got something against Lewis Hamilton. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care if some geeks are coming on the internet, coming on my Twitter and saying to me, ah, oh, he's just been, he's just having his opinion. Shut the fuck up. Very simple. That guy is the most biased commentator on the Sky, on the Sky Sports F1 team. Get him off my TV. Never won no, never won a race in his life. Why is he a my, who is he to judge? Never won a race. He's had, what, 40 races in F1? Not even that. Never won nothing. I saw him on YouTube a couple of weeks ago when he was doing DTMs. And because it was slightly slow on the pits, he was crying, uh, crying into his pillow. Crying into his pillow. He, li he sounded like um, Pepper Pig when he was screaming. Anyway, enough of that geek. Lap 8. Perez does the same on shows. On the slipstream. So you had the two Red Bulls chasing Lewis Hamilton. Now, where was Bottas? I know Bottas, look. Bottas started off in 10th place. I get it. But by lap 8, he was still in 10th place. Even the savage Alonso in the car that he had was making grands on other drivers. Bottas was nowhere to be seen. Nowhere. Now, if Russell, now look, like, like I said, I've always defended Bottas. I still think he's a great driver. But maybe it's time for him maybe to move over because, and let someone else come in. Because if he's not going to try, it seems like he's not even trying. If he's not going to try, do one. Simple. You're getting the money. You're getting the money. If you're not going to try, if you're going to sandbag, do one. Very simple. Bring Russell in. And that's it. Very simple. And there was rumours... A few months ago, about a month ago now, not a few months ago, that if Bottas doesn't pick up, that he was going to get replaced in the constructors. Now, I'm not sure if that's going to happen. I can't see Mercedes doing that. But if they did it, I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised if tomorrow morning I woke up now and I said, Bottas is gone and we're going to have someone to come in and fill him. Even stuff for Van Door. He's the Mercedes reserve driver. Maybe to give him a shot, maybe. See what he can do with the car. Because he's a good driver. He's always in the simulator. He got he's a, he drives for them in Formula E. I know it's not the same as Formula 1, but he's a good driver. And that's why Mercedes have kept him. So maybe give him a race in Bottas' car and see what happens. Don't know. So, lap 11. Hamilton pits. This is where it all started to go wrong. You know what? It's a fact. Listen, we, we and it was we know it wasn't Hamilton's fault. It's a fact that someone was coming down the pits, and that was I think that was Pierre Gasly. Lap eleven, Hamilton comes to the pits, puts a hard tyres on, and there was a four point six delay in the pits because he was in the pits for four point six. Usually, I think they get a three second, two point eight average of Mercedes pit. But as he was about to jump out the pits, um, Gasly was coming down. So Hamilton had to slight, um, slightly pause. And it was a 4.6 in the pits. So we all know. Because Hamilton was just behind. Because 
Max Verstappen was just behind Hamilton before he went into the pits. That 4.6 delay, that was his spot at the front grid gun. That was it. Because as soon as I saw that, it don't matter if Hamilton done a fast lap straight after that. Max done a fast lap and he came into the pits. And you, we all know how Red Bull's pits are. So lap 13, Max reacts to that, comes into the pits. Lewis sets the fastest lap and they was in the pits. I think it was like two point something seconds. So lap 13, Max pits, Lewis sets fastest lap, Max jumps, Hamilton in the pits, out of the pits, and Max goes into front in front. And lap 14, Perez pits. And he there was there, and with Perez's pit, yeah, there was a bit of a delay with Perez in the pits. Couple of seconds. He came out and he was still in front of Hamilton. So it seems like Red Bull had a lot left. And that pit, what Hamilton had, and lap 13, now lap 11, it didn't help him. So, lap 18, Horner, um, he said, come on the radio, and he said to Max, watch the right rear. The right rear tyre, not looking good. So when we heard that, we thought nothing of it. He probably, we all thought probably he was playing mind games, trying to play. They all do it, it's Formula 1. People come on the radio to say to Hamilton, comes on the radio, it says, I've got no wear in my tyres. I got no grip in my tyres, and then the two laps later, he gets fast his lap. So when Horner come out on the radio and, and he said this on the radio to Max Verstappen, he says, lap 18, Horner said, the, look, the right rear tyres I've got. I mean, they're, they're not looking good. So nobody thought nothing. Commentators didn't really acknowledge it at all. Paul, the rest of them didn't acknowledge it. He was probably jerking off somewhere in the back over Max Verstappen because Max Verstappen was in front. So. Lap 30, we had the first safety car. Everybody called it. It's always most of the time when we come to Baku, there is a safety car, and the safety car come out. Right rear tire failed for Lance Stroll. He hit that barrier so hard. I'm glad he walked out of the car. He was look. He looked a bit shaken up. And yeah, I'm glad. But just before Gasly, now just before Stroll had that tyre failure before he went to the barrier. Gasly was on the radio to his engineer complaining about power issues. So at this time, I thought, you know what, Gasly, he's, he's, he's doing well, but he, he might have to have an, a DNF, a bit like um, Ocon. Um, but never, his engineer said, look, we can't see nothing on the data, carry on. And he carried on. As soon as that happened, Stroll got a um, right rear tyre puncher. And there's going to be a lot of um, complaints about the Pirelli tyres because that sh that tyre, the way it ripped up, it shouldn't have done that. He was on the hard tyres. At that time, Lance Stroll was out there the longest, but the hard tyres, the compound hard tyres, should have done more than lap um, than 30 laps. And the, rear, the right rear tyre just ripped to pieces. Now, the safety car come out, and the guy that had the safety car come out, and then they came. There was the, um, I think it was out, I don't know how many, I think he was out for about 10 minutes maybe, maybe a bit longer. And yeah, and that was it. That the safety car during the safety car, unsafe, um, unsafe, and left wasn't on correctly. I think um, Mick Schumacher came into the pits. He put his um, tire around. His wheel went on correctly. He drove off, and the engineer said, "Stop the car! Stop the car! Come back! Your tire, is, your wheel's not on correctly." And that was during the safety car. Five laps to go. Now I was watching this thing. Look, it's going to be a Red Bull one and two gonna be Lewis third place all right if he would if Hamilton would have got the first spot and Max would have got first I think it would have been 12 points behind him it's okay it's a long season it's a marathon not a sprint that's what Hamilton said five laps to go I was watching Hamilton chasing Perez down that big straight I actually saw him I saw Max's car in the far distance I think Ham he's got this. Lee's Hamilton's on the podium. He gets points. He leaves to fight another day. There's a long season ahead. The next tracks are coming up at all five of Mercedes. They're not going to be on the street tracks anymore. They're going to be on real tracks, not street tracks. Grand Prix tracks. I've got nothing against Baku. Baku is an amazing track. Okay, a street track. But at the. At this time, it's not for some reason the street tracks are not gelling with 
the Mercedes, it's just not gelling. Get off the street tracks. But Baku's an amazing place to come. It always gives us safety cars. Look, look at Monaco two weeks ago. Look how shit that race was. But you had the stupid geek saying, Monaco, Monaco, Monaco's good. Monaco's a good track. Now give me a perfect explanation. Why is Monaco good? Why is Monaco good? Don't ever respond because they're dumb geeks. They like to just say it to be popular, to be different. Monaco is dog shit. Monaco belongs in the fucking toilet. Look at the difference now. Look how good this race was back in. Look how good the race was. The race was amazing. What an exciting race. And you saw dog shit Monaco two weeks ago. But what I'm saying is the street, let's get back to the point. The street track, for some reason, for some reason this year, just it doesn't suit the Mercedes car. And I think they'll be the happiest to get the fuck off this street track. That's what I'm saying. So five laps to go. I'm watching Hamilton trying to on that big straight trying to get close to Perez. He was nowhere near Perez, not really. He wasn't gonna catch, not in my opinion, he wasn't gonna catch Perez. And all of a sudden, all I saw something twist up in a corner, man. I saw some car just do boom, boom, 360. And then the camera went right there and Max Verstappen, right rear tire, just like Stroll, ripped to pieces, gone. Another Pirelli failure. Another Pirelli failure. Save Max Verstappen would have hurt himself. Save he would have been seriously hurt. What then, Pirelli? You still going to defend your tyre? You need to sort your tyre out, man. Right rear tyre ripped to pieces. The wear out too fast, man. That's all I'm saying. But at this time, Max Verstappen, he was out the race. So I said, look, Lewis is going to get the old 20 odd points now. Even if he finishes second, now they brought out the safety car, the black flag, the, everybody had to come into the pits. Paul the rest that went quiet, probably crying to his pillow in the back. Cry, crying into his tissues, because his mic went mute. And then all of a sudden, the safety car, um, the, the, the drivers came back out, and I thought, I, thought to, I said to myself, look, just, just take second, you'll be fine. Don't try to dive, bam. Don't look. I don't. I know you. You're supposed to press some buttons, some magic button, which I'd, I didn't even know that. I had. But I said, look, just settle for a second. And what happened? They had a standing still start, just like a race start. And then all of a sudden, started the race. Hamilton had an amazing start because but before the start, I saw Hamilton's car smoking. I've lit. I actually thought the car was on fire at one time. So they had lights out of the way we go. Hamilton went. He was gone. He got the better start. And then when he got to that corner, he completely locked up. He said he forgot to take the magic button off. And then he had no, he had nothing. His, his wheels locked up. So he went from second, which he could have been 20 points ahead of Max Verstappen. And now he went from second to basically plum last nearly. He was behind Nikita Mazepin. That's where he was. No points for Mercedes. No point for Lewis Hamilton. Uh, Max is still in front. He could have been 20 points in front of Max Verstappen. And now he's three points behind Max Verstappen. Both out of the race. At the end, he was in his cockpit. Understandable. I understand. I understand. He's sitting in his cockpit. He don't know. At the end of the day, he can't blame the team. He can't blame the team. He was there in his cockpit. He was saying, oh, God, I think I didn't, I didn't take the, the button off. I didn't take the button off. A rare mistake. The last time Hamilton finished outside of points was 2018. Three years ago. That's how great that guy is. Three years ago, the last time he didn't finish a race with points. What an amazing achievement by Lewis Hamilton. But the positive... Max Verstappen didn't finish either. That's how you're going to look at it. But Red Bull are like 20 points ahead of Mercedes in the constructors now. Because Bottas 
I think he ended up finished 12th. He didn't make up no positions. How is that possible? How is that possible? How can Bottas in the Mercedes not make up any spot? Lose his spots in the race. Lose his positions. He didn't gain no positions. None. He lost positions. But that's it. Um, Perez, race winner. And, 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 and it's not the last for this season. I'll tell you that now. Told you dumb geeks about Perez. He's saying, oh yeah, one guy's come out and said, oh, Pe after two races, I'm not going to name his name. He come out and said, oh, Perez is a flop. Yeah, what now, geek? Fake ass. You know who you are. And everyone was saying, oh yeah, Vettel finished. Got the second spot though. He took the turn in Monaco when he passed Gasly out of the pits. And now we're back to the old Vettel. The grit. And that's the end of the review. Well, I'm um, thank. I'm glad. You know what? I'm happy for Sergio Perez. I'm a big advocate of Sergio Perez. If you know me on my channel, I always talk. I hold, I hold Perez on the pedestal. I really like Perez. He's a he's a great driver, and he deserves to win. So, this is the end of the review. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Interviews are going to be following shortly. I'm going to upload it probably. You'll probably get it tomorrow morning on Monday morning because I've got a lot of other stuff to do. But look out for my Tez Notebook on my channel, which will be uploading today. And this is the end of the review. Um, I'll see you two weeks in France where I think um, Mercedes are going to come out a different animal. There was a different, there was, I saw a picture online with um, Toto Wolf and Lewis Hamilton hugging each other. And you can see, look, we're going to come back stronger. They will come back stronger. Back on the tracks now. No more street tracks. We, we haven't got no Singapore either, which I really love Singapore. There's no Singapore. So that's a blow to Red Bull because that was kind of their track. Um, yeah, back to the tracks again. We've got France. Then we've got a double. We've got a triple header. We've got France. Then we've got um, Austria back to back. And they, they all favour Mercedes. And um, so there you go. That's it. So this is Solo P1. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And follow me. Links will be below. And this is Solo P1 Sunday. Thank you very much, guys. Bye. And then in the end, it was it was cruel for you too, Toto. Can you explain what happened? Uh, it, it seemed that something happened with a, a switch, whether a mistake or not, uh, that Lewis might have taken hit. No, it can't be called a mistake. It was just when uh, Sergio, um, you know, when the, when the, when he came over, uh, we have the same procedure. Uh, he, he touched the button and the brake balance changed and the brake balance went all the way forward and that uh, and obviously the car doesn't stop he looked like his tires or his front tires were pretty hot before the restart though hotter than some of the others they were smoking away yeah i don't think that was the problem um i think it was more it was more a, a, a simple uh, uh how can i say uh, you know finger finger problem yeah, yeah. But what about the race itself? Because it was a tough one for Lewis. He was really putting the pressure on Sergio, especially, and hopefully he was going to get himself to map. But he didn't quite have what you needed in his speed, or was it just because he was in dirty air behind Sergio? No, I think the, in Monaco and here, we didn't have a car that was competitive, uh, full stop. We, we still have our underlining issues that uh, we are not getting off the start um, into the happy window of the tyres yet with the setup and also after the stops uh, we make operational mistakes and uh, we lose all the time that you can see today uh, we lose all the time in the um, twisty old town or city and that this is, this is what happened in monaco so it's not a shocker now that the car that won three races suddenly is nowhere it is not uh, we know the deficits um, we, we've seen that in these particular parts of the tracks and we know that we have gaps that we just need to overcome. Right, is that 90 degree corners that are causing you maybe more issues than maybe an opened radius corner? No, the 90 degrees, uh, we have actually been quite competitive. It was all through the twisty bit, um, seven to 10. Uh, you could see in the middle sector, it's just, we were really close. Uh, the car was quicker on the straight, but the middle, the middle sector was a total shocker. What do you say to Lewis when something like this happens? How do you, how do you manage this? I mean, it's just an arm it's around the shoulder. So it's the, it's the end of a huge, I mean, something like 54 
uh, race scoring streak for him in, in the most um, tough of circumstances? What I see, well, we have four hours to get in the plane now. <laughs> um, maybe we'll drink. Maybe not good to say on Sky, but we will. We will drink. And um, he's just, he doesn't make any mistakes. And uh, that is what you need to, what you need to um, remember. That's what I'm going to say to him. I wouldn't wish for anybody else to be in the yeah, car. Yeah, but look, look at how much you achieved, though, going from Friday through to today. And this is a circuit that you say you don't like, like Monaco. Now, there's not too many that are like this still to come. We've lost Singapore, which potentially could have been a good one. Mexico. So you, you would have been happy with that. Yeah, yeah you've got yeah, We don't know what's going to happen with Mexico and Hungary, too. And potentially, you know, you could say that Austria is a, is a strong Red Bull pack, track. You must fancy your chances around France to to bounce back next week or a couple of weeks time well I have no doubt this is a team that is so strong I'm so angry uh, that um, we're going to transform the anger into positive uh, force we're warriors and we're going to come back one final one on, on Valtteri just wasn't there at all from this weekend uh, w w again what are you going to say there the car was nowhere and uh, when the car is nowhere in a city circuit uh, you lose all confidence okay thank you Toto okay, appreciate it enjoy Congratulations, back on the podium. I can see the smile through your mask. How are you feeling? Ah, incredible. Honestly, I don't really know what to say. It's been a, such an incredible weekend. Uh, P4 in, the, in quali, P3 in the race, and uh, with such, you know, like such an intense race, especially the end. Uh, and it was very hard, I think. You know, from mid middle of the race, we started to have engine problem. I started to lose uh, performance in the straight, and. Uh, could not be as fast anymore as, uh, as the start of the, the, the race and uh, that's when Seb started to catch, he passed me in the straight and I knew it would be difficult and especially when there was the, the last two laps, uh, I knew I would be in a tricky position to defend my position on, on Charles uh, right behind and that's exactly what's happened. All the straights, he was right there, he actually passed me before turn one and uh, yeah, I saw the podium uh, like right in front of my eyes, I just gave everything I could and uh, yeah, in the end we made it possible. It was an intense battle, but uh, exactly how I like racing. It was very hard but fair, and uh, um, yeah, I'm really pleased for the guys to, to get uh, this third podium together. How satisfying is it that you're also able to follow up that pace and qualify in, in the race? I know there was a little bit of fortune, but you know, nonetheless, Alfa Tauri been bang up there this week. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think all in all, we, we had the, the pace to be in the top five. Uh, you know, I was keeping up with uh, with the top guys at the start of the race with the with the option uh, with the soft tires whatever um, and um, and then yeah after that even on hard the pace wasn't bad until we had this issue and we started to drop a bit the, the, the drop back but all in all you know a lot of question marks when it goes bad you need to understand but mm -hmm. when it goes that well <laughs> and we kind of we don't really understand why we, we were so fast all weekend we also need to understand because if there is any way we can reproduce this kind of performance um, mm -hmm. I think it it can change a lot uh, our season. So now it's time to celebrate, enjoy these kind of moments. Uh, I'm just so happy. Unfortunately, I have no one, no friends, no family here to celebrate with. I have my team, and I'm sure pretty much half the team is already gone now to UK. So uh, yeah, we'll celebrate with the guys that uh, are still here. But uh, it's just an incredible, uh, incredible day for the whole team. It's been so long since we've heard that utter joy in your voice on the team radio. Can you just put into words what this podium means to you? I'm happy, obviously. It was a good day and uh, happy for the team mostly. You know, it's been a tough season start, tough beginning to the season. So I think uh, the guys are over the moon. They will be up in the air soon because half the team is flying right now. But uh, yeah, uh, I think, uh, yeah. The race obviously gives us a, a big smile on the face. Everybody as well in Silverstone in the factory. I mean, the guys are pushing hard and uh, as I said, we expected more from the beginning of the year. Obviously, it's great to get such a strong result in, but uh, I hope that this momentum now we got we gathered in the last two races helps us in the next uh, next couple to be a bit more aggressive and in the points uh, to to really in the, to be in the fight to score points more regularly. Your pace throughout the race was strong on yeah, that soft good. tire. You went so long on it, and it was and it was still good. We could have yeah. stayed out, so obviously we didn't want to take any risk, but it was still mega, and I thought I could still improve. So. Yeah, it was really good. I think we really hit the sweet spot, which in the street circuit is obviously crucial to really trust the car. And that's what happened today. So I'm really, uh, really pleased. And uh, we could see that also at the restart. You I know, don't I just, really know what I to say. I feel so bad for you. The brakes were There was a gap. I went for it. We, we passed Charles. We passed uh, Pierre. So 
really happy and it would have been fourth. Obviously, we benefit then from the two DNFs in front of us or the, also the mistake of uh, Lewis, but I think uh, it's been a great, great day, so I'm happy. Two street tracks need confidence. It looks like you've got the confidence in this car. Is this, are we, are we seen a turnaround, do you think? I hope. I mean, we see the next track is a boring one to come, but uh, it will tell us a little bit more about where the car pace is. So it's a bit of an, it's a bit of an easier track. Um, but we still, you know, we need to do everything right. And uh, as I said, hopefully that trust translates also to a better performance in a normal or regular track. But uh, street circuits is obviously the key. And um, yeah, Friday already, even though the results were bad, I really felt good and I was very relaxed getting to sleep and no worries and concerns. So I knew that on Saturday I can pull it off. I had a mistake and lock up and then the red flags. But today I, I was open minded and knew that, you know, I don't know, I just felt I never had to look back. I always was looking forward. So uh, that, that was obviously a strong point. You just turned it on. Congratulations. What is it about this place? What is it about Baku that you just turned it on? I think we, we all love Baku, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, it worked well, you know. Uh, we had good pace, good start, uh, good first lap. Uh, we did everything perfect apart from that restart that simply I didn't have any grip. Uh, I had an issue with my tires and I couldn't, I couldn't warm, up, warm them up. So I think that was part of it of the issue that I had a very poor uh, start and then after that we were just uh, we gave it all you know I thought like I cannot miss uh, this race two laps from the end I broke as late as possible on the clean line and then when I saw Lewis locking up so well uh, and he just went straight uh, so yeah it's a, a big shame for him because it I mean I've been in that position and we are all it just shows you know how much on the limit we are and how vulnerable we are to mistakes all of us you know and uh, Yep, today happened to him, and um, overall, I'm, I'm just very pleased. When we look back on your time at Red Bull, do you think this is the moment, this is the weekend that you finally clicked with the car, with the team, it's turned things I around? certainly did a very good step in understanding the car, in, in feeling comfortable. I think there is still a lot to come from us. So we're just working pretty hard. You know, we are flat out, uh, I'm giving my best, and uh, the season is still is very long, you know, so anything can happen. I don't really know what to say. I feel so bad for you. The brakes were smoking. You had a great start off that restart. It was all looking so good. And then what happened? Yeah, I, when basically when uh, Checo pulled over to the left and I moved to the left and I, I hit a switch, unknowingly hit a switch and it basically just switched off the rear wheel, the rear brakes and only the fronts were working. So it just went straight. Um, and you know, it's uh, really painful, but I'm really sorry to the team for uh, for this this day. You know, all I can do is just try and rebuild. But you know, I think I gave absolutely everything I could today. I know this isn't the time that you're going to be looking at positives, but like if you look at the way you came back through the weekend, like you found answers. You've got to take something from this weekend going to the next races. Yeah, there's definitely there's definitely lots of positives to take from the weekend. But of course, this is in the last moment, you know, the second to last lap to lose out, but you know, Max had bad luck also today, so you know, there's a long way to go.